Hi everybody, uh, my name is Greg and I'm from Wisconsin, uh, the home of the Frozen Chosen. And I'm taking this video today uh, to introduce you to what's called a tempering tank for water heaters. Um, the idea of tempering tanks and really all they are is a ambient tank that is um, used to store water and convect the temperature around the tank into the water that then feeds the water heater. And I'll explain that a little bit more in detail in a moment. Um, my uh, starting with tempering tanks uh, began well over 10, 15 years ago um, when um, the uh, tankless water heaters came out. We had a really cold winter in Wisconsin and these tankless heaters only had what's called a 60 degree rise uh, to the heaters. In other words, if and the water was coming in at 35 degrees that winter. Well, the tankless heaters could only rise the temperature from the groundwater by 60 degrees Fahrenheit uh, through it, and they had like an 80,000 BTU um, gas line to them. So um, the residents of these homes were only getting 95 degree um, shower water. Now, needless to say, our bodies are 98 degrees and they were not happy. But um, as the complaints came in, I remembered an old plumber who had who had plumbed back in the 60s and um, I was walking with him in a basement one day and I seen this big old steel tank uh, probably 80 gallon and I asked him I said what is that thing and he goes oh those are called ambient tanks and we put them before electric water heaters so that we can absorb the uh, basically the temperature or energy in the air, wasted energy, back into the water so that it will feed the electric water heater pre-warmed water, which made the electric heaters run about half the time as they normally would and save the uh, end user a lot of money. And so I remembered that in back in the 60s when he was um, plumbing, Really, all they had was electric water heaters and gas was just a thing coming to be. Well, as time went on, the, um, the age of natural gas took over and it was cheap. So tempering tanks and their use have been lost for a good generation now. But now because of uh, energy increases, shortage of energy, uh, skyrocketing electric and gas costs, which are only going to continue to go up. Um, the scarcity of just getting a water heater now um, because of the, the supply chain issues. It's so important to keep the water heater that you have working. And I'll go into what cold water does to water heaters and what um, and how that extends the life by only running your, basically your heater half the time by uh, energy that is being absorbed through the air. So I'm gonna grab my phone here and we're gonna have a little class, all right? Okay, now what we have, this is a little closet here and it is, looks like a, a, a horror story at best. And um, I want you to see that the temperature in this closet, the air temperature, uh, is about 73 degrees, okay? Um, now, if I was, um, and I'm just going to pause this for a minute, and I'm going to do something, just a moment. Okay, I went and turned the faucet on. Uh, so that you can see how cold our groundwater is right now in Wisconsin. Now, down here I have configured uh, the water coming in, which is right here, 
and made a three valve bypass that goes to the water softener and this comes back from the uh, tempering tank and you can see the tempering tank as I back up here a little bit is there and down there and back in here is the water softener and the water basically uh, comes in and that valve stops it and then it goes up over and right now the water is just about down to 54 degrees and I expect it's going to probably drop a little bit more before our, our uh, uh, filming is done but it goes back and around which then goes into the water softener back here and then comes back out there and back up comes down and we got a little safety valve there goes into a product called spirotherm that helps heat the water and then in the bottom of the um, tempering tank it will come up and then back out and then you can see the tempering tank water is still reading at 68 degrees and then that comes over and down here and into the heater okay so the idea is here is we want to take that 70 some degree water or air and put it into our tempering tank now you can see that my water temperature has is now down to about 50 degrees and dropping and we'll keep an eye on that bad boy as we go along okay but you can see our water is running back here you see that water softener it's just blinking softening it means water's passing through it right now um, and I've got a faucet on just for the sake of this video and that's actually how many gallons we got remaining um, and then of course it's coming back up here and the tempering tank is still reading 68 degrees which is feeding my water heater okay so um, you can see now that the groundwater is now at about 48 degrees and dropping so what benefit do we have going on here okay so what we're doing is we are taking um, the water that would normally come into this heater and make it run super long uh, to heat uh, which the energy cost on an electric heater is twice as much and we're just warming it up to what the room temperature is that then feeds into the heater now I made a little diagram of this and these are the cold facts and I'll try to back up you may have to enlarge it a little bit but Basically, it takes one BTU, and that's a British thermal unit of energy, to heat one pound, not a gallon, a pound of water one degree Fahrenheit in temperature. This means it takes eight pounds, basically, to heat one gallon of water, which is 8.3 pounds, uh, one degree Fahrenheit just one degree Fahrenheit okay so let's say we got a standard 40 gallon gas water heater um, it would use 332 British thermal units of energy to heat 40 gallons the entire contents of the heater of water one degree Fahrenheit 40 gallons one degree 300 BTUs okay now if your incoming groundwater is 40 degree Fahrenheit and you have to heat it uh, to 110 degree Fahrenheit for showers and so on 
dishwashers, whatever, uh, you would need 332 BTUs for every one degree of Fahrenheit you raise it um, and to heat the water inside the water heater uh, uh, that is 40 gallons in it. In this, conclusion, this concludes that to raise the internal temperature from 40 degrees Fahrenheit to 110 degrees Fahrenheit, you would need to raise it by 70 degrees from the groundwater 40 up to the 110. Or if you took 332 British thermal units per one degree um, and to raise that much it would take 23,240 BTUs. That is what's called a quarter of a therm. Gas is um, basically on your bill you're going to see therms used. A therm is 100,000 BTUs. Okay, So you're going to use a quarter of a therm just to heat that that water in that heater um, up 70 degrees and you just have one tank heater. Now using a temper tank allows you to begin the water heating cycle at an ambient room temperature of about 70 degrees during the winter months. Therefore, you start heating at 70 degrees uh, as a beginning point, not 40 degrees. And at the end of the 110 degrees Fahrenheit cycle of the heater, where you want to take uh, showers and so on, the water heater only has to raise the water temperature at that point from an ambient temperature uh, of 70 degrees it's starting to 110 or just 40 degrees instead of 70 degrees and I put versus cold untempered water from 40 to 110 or 70 degrees of rice time this equates out to only 13,280 uh, 280 BTUs used by using a tempering tank to heat that one tank of water versus cold untempered water at 23,240 used. Almost a full 10,000 BTUs or 56% of the energy is saved uh, per 40 gallons of water in this scenario. Um, cost per BTU on an electric water heater, um, it costs twice in other words. A gas BTU or a therm is so much money, but if you were to take that same therm, um, it's called a kilowatt hour, and it takes 30 kilowatt hours to equal um, that many BTUs in an electric water heater like this. Now, I want you to notice something on this electric water heater. Just to keep the water warm for a year, they estimate, and this is a 2014 heater at that time, just to keep the water warm was $585. That's not even you using water. That's just sitting here wasting the energy into the air. Okay? Now, the bonus of using a tempering water, uh, tempered water, increases your life uh, from the thermal, from thermal cracking on the bottom of the heat exchanger. On a gas heater, uh, electric you have elements, but on a gas heater at the bottom, it heats on a plate of gas hitting it. Then there's, in here where your water comes in, there's a tube that runs inside all the way to the bottom and it terminates at six inches from the bottom. Now just imagine that plate just heating away um, with um, 40,000 BTUs of energy against the plate. Very hot. And then you throw basically an ice cube on it 
in water pressure, just think of a garden hose hitting the cement at six inches. With 40 degree water, I'll tell you that up in Wisconsin, the most of our water heaters are replaced during the winter months, okay? Uh, because of that, right there, the incoming water, now we are at, uh, about 46, now coming in, about 46 degrees, but yet our tempered water, we're still at about 66 degrees. And so, um, we got 46, 56, 66, so we're saving basically right now 20 degrees of rise time uh, between those two temperatures 45 55 65 and so we're getting a big benefit of not only helping the heater to get better efficiency and at um, you take um, that temporary efficiency there from the 45 coming in, it equates out to somewhere in the neighborhood of about 35 to 40% of an energy kiss, or 35 to 40% of the dollars you won't have to pay um, in the future, okay? So this is this temper tank, this is a 20 gallon tempering tank that I've got in this closet. But um, over the years, uh, that I've made these for people, and it's pretty much been on um, Greg making me a tempering tank. I made some literature for it, and um, here's a picture of one that is a 40 gallon tempering tank uh, next to a, a water heater. And here's another one, um, a 40 gallon tempering tank that is next to a um, another tank. Uh, by the way, these numbers here are no longer even working. <laughs> so that I better tell you. Um, here's the original temper tank that I made out of metal. But I found if you make them out of metal, they tend to poke holes in the side of the tank. So it's been a fun experience seeing what works and what doesn't. Okay, and that's into a gas heater right there. And that was down in uh, I think Glenmore, Illinois. Uh, but um, here's another one that I just roughly made for a gas water heater and here's basically what a 40 gallon uh, tempering tank looks like when I make them so basically you got a 20 gallon that's thinner taller and then you got a 40 gallon that I make for larger families and so on so this video is really just informational for you this is called spirotherm of the tempering vein. And on the side of the tank, as you can see, what happens is as the water's coming in the bottom here, it's warming up. And as the water warms, it'll gather near the top. Your warmest water rises, your coldest water contracts. So as it's sitting all night or while you're at work during the day, the cold water actually will enter this vein here, continue its path down, hit that spiral therm, warm itself super quickly back into the tank and it will rise the heat and the cold keeps compressing and eventually the whole tank itself is at ambient temperature. Okay? So, um, a little bit about historical on the, the tempering tanks. Um, if you ever want to uh, contact me about tempering tanks, let's see if I get a different angle there. Um, there is my email, and I'll try to get it in a little closer here for you. Um, addygregory52 at gmail.com. I can tell you more where to get tanks. I might even be able to get you a few, uh, but this is for you to save money on making hot water, but also to save uh, in the crisis that we're going through right now in our country, save the life of the current heater that you have. 
Um, I own another home and the heater in that house has a tempering tank on it. And right now that was a 2006 gas heater. Well, 06, uh, 16, um, what do we got? Uh, 16 and another seven. Uh, so we got 17 plus years on that water heater just because the bottom has not cracked and I know there are six people using it right now. So this is Greg um, trying to give you some information and if I can help you further email me we'll chat we'll talk uh, but this video was for your benefit on how to temper your um, incoming water before it goes into your water heater to save money and the life of your equipment. Greg out.